Hey guys, it's Ryan, um, Hide16. Just wanted to take a quick video for YouTube and to share with you guys. I got a new product from uh, GFB. We're used to the uh, the DV Plus diverter valve uh, upgrade, and now this is their new uh, latest DVX kit. Um, the new DVX is a basically a cross between a dual port vent to atmosphere or VTA spacer uh, or blow off valve, commonly referred to. Uh, and a, a hybrid with the original DV Plus. So uh, DVX still uses the factory diverter valve solenoid like the DV Plus, but now the solenoid uh, is located remotely from the valve body, uh, basically because GFB didn't have enough room to incorporate it on the valve. So it's now a two-piece system. Um, and in terms of remote uh, mounting the remote portion of the solenoid, um, I think we are going to be tasked with finding either an unused threaded hole uh, somewhere on the you know, compressor housing or vacuum pump where we can uh, remote mount um, the unit. Otherwise, we'll be zip tying or you know, tucking it someplace out of the way, uh, safe and secure. And um, you know, during a future install, I'll try to find uh, a mounting point for others. Otherwise, we'll just have to all work together to determine another location. Um, so claims that GFB gave us were that the opening speed response uh, still within 10% of the DV plus opening time, uh, which is basically like splitting hair since it really adds up to a response speed that's, uh, you know, mathematically 0 0.002 seconds slower than the DV plus. Um, I'm assuming it's just because of their new design. Really, I don't think anyone's going to feel or uh, see that um, slower response time it's really not slower it's again uh, you know a fraction of a second slower uh, in GFB's testing and so in terms of the kit the DVX kit which I'll open now we'll unbox it's a really nice kit I always like their packaging so they have a little tab there it says pull, pull out of the box and from there it looks like it unfolds So it looks like these two pieces are sandwiched between two foam blocks. So as we open that up, try to get you the view. This is what comes with the kit. So usual remote, or I'm sorry, mounting screws as usual. Um, looks like they have their center plunger, which we're used to seeing. So pretty standard with the O-ring. And then this is the main unit. So this looks like that interesting it has the port off the top and it has the VTA port here as you can see and then underneath it's like a canted design so that's where our main brass plunger with rubber face was and it feels like that main spring is still in there so a little bit of a different design not exposed like it was in the original uh, <clears throat> DV or DV plus and then on the front side as well, there is a gauge here. So the goal here is that it's a dual port design. So you can have recirc, uh, or you can have vent to atmosphere, or you can have a combination of both. And I'll go into the details as to why I believe or why I think G, uh, GFB did this. So as you move this lever, as you can see, it's actually opening the port. So that would be fully closed. And it looks like there's a, a speaker here. So I would assume that's no sound. And as you open it up, you're actually opening up for when that opens. Let's see if you can see that. Now that air is able to vent atmosphere. So again, closed, pressing, it's recircing. As you're opening this, pressing it, now it's vent atmosphere. The other end of the spectrum here is full noise. I'm assuming that's supposed to be a speaker again. So now that's full vent atmosphere. And I'll explain why they have this and why it's uh, able to be set by the user, whether a little, halfway, or all the way. We'll go into details, but they have the other portion, which looks like this is the, there you go, DVX part number T9659. That's the new part that will be coming out soon. So it's really a two-piece kit, um, and it comes with boost or vacuum line, which you would obviously connect one side to another, 
and that's where the remote portion comes into play. So you can't really get into video here, but or into the frame, but it would look like this. So the remote remote block or the DVX unit itself, and I'll go into the details on how it's built. So DVX kit includes again remote mounting uh, mounting block that effectively converts the factory diverter valve solenoid coil to a two-port solenoid valve and connects to the vent atmosphere spacer, otherwise known blow-off valve, with a length of vacuum hose that could be cut or trimmed. That's a description that GFB gave me directly. I want to run into more detail that they provided as well. Uh, DVX uses the same piston as the DV+, Plus, but the remote mounting block has a selectable spring preloaded lever which allows the inner sleeve to rotate, giving the user proportional control of the venting bias between atmospheric venting and recirculation. And so, as per GFB, the goal is to adjust the spring so that the valve closes after venting before the engine drops back to idle, evidently something that cannot be done with a vent atmosphere spacer or blow-off valve. So basically you're fine-tuning VTA versus recirc, um, I guess in the, in the hopes of this operating better. Um, DVX will not allow true 100% atmospheric venting because GFB left two millimeter of the piston travel permanently exposed to recirculation in order to take care of the low RPM flutter, which causes the P226 fault code when using the mainspring. So um, basically in the past, if we had this fault code, um, we had to remove the shorter, wider mainspring uh, within the uh, brass plunger here. Um, and it, that would actually make the original DB Plus operate like the factory diverter valve. So for some of us, we got the code, others we didn't. Um, I theorize or believe that it has to do with math readings and calculations, and that could be based on, could be dependent on the software that you're actually running, whether stock or, um, you know, APR, Unitronic, DV, you know, DM, anybody else, any of the above, Eurodyne, whoever else. Um, so for the manual drivers, mainspring was nice because it kept the throttle response sharper um, in between shifts. But now with the DVX, we should be able to have this back without the fault code. I believe that's the goal here that GFP is looking for. Adjust this bias um, to the point where you don't get the code. Um, you know, it's recircing the majority of it uh, into the system, but it's also, it also has a little bit of a blow off sound, but it's also VTA in, in some atmospheres to prevent it, or in some instances to prevent that, uh, that flutter and code. Um, GFB said that the can design of the valve allows the best flow for both atmospheric and recirculating outlets. They also said that the other dual port valves which bring the air up and out of the diverter chamber can't flow enough in recirculation mode to prevent compressor surge at high boost. This new DVX design allows the pistons to stay low in the chamber so recirculated air has a straight shot into the recirculation port. And when I asked GFB about fuel trims and the concern over metered air uh, being vented to atmosphere, it's always something that we uh, you know, worry about depending upon our tune, if we, are, um, if we are fully vent to atmosphere or we are fully recirc. Um, a lot of those blow off valves or DV spacers um, can cause some codes uh, in terms of the math readings. Um, GFB responded that the only time the blow off valves can affect fueling is for the brief time the valve is venting, which is typically under closed throttle. A lot of the blow-off valves on the market basically still use the factory diverter valve whose operation is not ideal for atmospheric venting valves. Uh, and since the factory diverter valve opens wide and stays open for at least two seconds after the throttle is closed or until the throttle is opened again, they will lose more air to the atmosphere than you would with the DVX. Um, and this could be why a lot of us have seen MAF fault codes with the full DV uh, spacer or blow off valve options. And in their testing, they have not seen evidence that the selectable atmospheric vent level affects long-term fuel trims because of the shorter selectable duration uh, of venting air. So that is, that's a basically a, uh, a summarized response I got from GFB when I asked them about, you know, fault codes and metered air and um, stuff like that. So. Basically at this point, I'm gonna to try to bring up a picture they sent me with the configuration. And I'm gonna to try to put it together on a DV for you. So the way they have it, if you 
this is your stock DV, whether it's a revision D, revision G, etc. Mine's in pieces. This is an old one that doesn't work. I just keep it for maybe, you know, just reference. But you evidently pull, take all this off as you would with the DV plus, you throw it out of the way. You have the spring that's in here. Um, you would remove the spring that came on the DVD, on the DV, excuse me, and you would pop out the one that GFB provides. So a little bit, it's a little bit shorter, a little bit different. It's about the same size, but could be new, could be different, who knows. So pop that on. This piece goes on just like the DV plus, so that would press up and down. And you wanna make sure you oil all this stuff. There's an O-ring here, O-ring here, and an O-ring on the tip here. So you want to make sure all these parts with O-rings are oiled with engine oil uh, or some sort of grease beforehand. Nothing crazy, just lightly. So that would go in, and as per the picture they're providing, you would take this, looks like a, almost like a block off plate, and there is a little hole in here. It's got an angle to it. I don't know if you could see that. And that's exactly where this would plug. So just like the DV Plus, there's another guide hole here that lines up with the post on the DV housing. And you would basically just force the two together. Let's see if we can get it. There we go. And that's a nice tight fit. That's good. And so that's what the DV would look like. From there, you would use the included springs, or uh, screws, excuse me. I'm very tired today. Um, included screws, and you would screw them into the holes. Uh, Actually, from the back side, it looks like I was wrong. So, from the back side, you have one, you have two, and you have three. So, what would happen is, is these screws would pop in there, and you would tighten it from the back side of the DV. And after all three are done, I think what they have on the outside is this hole here. There are three same size screws, which are for the back of the, the DV and this block off plate, and there's one long screw. And I'm assuming this one is the one that goes through there. As you can see, the thread exposure, this is, we would try to mount this to any sort of hole or anything that could be in the way, and this would hold the DV plus, or the DVX, excuse me, together, and would mount it remotely from the compressor housing on the turbo. From there, when that's mounted, tucked away, secured, put together, etc., this would be out of the picture. And this is the piece that would get bolted back on. I'm assuming using the OE screws uh, for where the uh, diverter valve was on the compressor housing, you would just reuse those screws, maybe the same screws you had with your DV plus or your OEM DV. But again, three holes, see them there. And so this is what would actually go on the compressor housing of the turbo. Makes sense now as to why they are separate because you wouldn't, you know, this would be Inside the compressor housing, this would be tucked up against it. Bolts going in, holding it against the compressor, like that. And then you would have this portion sticking out out of the compressor housing. And so if you were to have all these pieces together, uh, it, would, it would be too big and there's not enough room under there for sure. So I guess the idea is bolt this to the compressor housing. And then from there, you can reach up in there under the car and you can start adjusting the VTA amount that you want. And uh, I'll try to get more clarification or in my testing, I'll get more clarification on, you know, how to properly set this and maybe monitor some data uh, to see if we're seeing any difference. And, you know, maybe it's a matter of putting it in, see if you get the P2261 code. If you do, open this a little bit, test again. If it comes back, open it a little bit, test again. If it's gone, guess what? You have some VTA, but you also have some recirc. Um, you shouldn't throw a code and it's supposed to be the best of both worlds. And also you have that mainspring back in here for that throttle response and uh, you know maintaining some boost in the intake track in between shifts um, for better throttle response, et cetera. So from there, you would take the included boost line, like they said, you would connect, this would be on the compressor housing, you would connect this, and then what you would do is take the other end and you would route, route it to the remote mounted now DV, which has its port there zip ties, etc., And that really, uh, in a nutshell, is what it is. I mean, in, in looking at the hardware here, I mean, this has some serious uh, resistance, spring-loaded. It's not going to move by itself. Sorry, let's get a better view here. 
this lever is you know really stiff really really kind of tough to move but but good because you know it's not going to you know flop around or move on its own or probably change over time i mean it's a spring-loaded design um you know the canter design is very interesting now it's no longer a uh it's no longer a straight approach on the piston like the dv plus was it now has this canter design that drops down and then applies the pressure uh back towards it and um you know in general i really i like the design of this and how it you know how you can open and close it i mean there's really tight tolerances here which is nice so um it also has this looks like there's a that's that two millimeters that they were talking about i don't know if you could see that but the let's see if you can get it this slit here that you see run down that's better that slit that's what they're talking about where if you chose to have it fully recirced, there's still that two millimeter of of travel there that um you know that can help vent or that two two millimeter of open kind of slit that's there um to help vent too so overall i think it could be a uh, better design very interested to try it out um always from gfb some serious hardware really well machined great finish i mean you know very straightforward design in terms of installation i mean it's just it is it is a beautiful piece the db plus i thought was always a real nice piece of hardware you know now seeing this with the two pieces together i mean it's i mean it's just it's it's it just oozes quality i mean i really appreciate everything that brett and gunda at uh, gfb have done um you know the products they've sent me to review and test um you know it's just it's been a great collaborative working relationship they're very good with customer service and response and uh you know they make quality products you know whether a lot of people understand them uh fully or don't or you know appreciate them on their vehicles or realize the performance benefit i mean i they're continually striving to create something that's um you know bigger better um and you know provide the vag market with uh you know great options for now uh research diverter valve upgrades uh and or now vent atmosphere or blow off valve options that won't throw codes or may respond better with the car so uh time will tell i will have a uh a review up um at some point I'm not sure where if it's on the forums or social media but we'll have something up soon with some photos of the install coverage and my feedback but overall Again, the boxing or the unboxing, the hardware, uh, everything that's gone into this product, you know, thoroughly impressed and amazed. And uh, now it's time to install and see what it will do. So thanks, guys. Talk to you soon.